we're tightening the final pieces we've been working on this for eight weeks and i'm very nervous it's off right yes with we're Jazzy and JR, and with no experience, but after a ton of research, we can finally say we are done with wiring up our 12 and 120 volt electrical system. While it was definitely overwhelming, it was 100% doable, and after this video, we hope you'll feel at least a little bit more confident going into your electrical build, or just learn a thing or two about wiring up your next project. Either way, we're glad you're here, because this is The Road We're On. Okay, so we decided to take a break from filming because we were getting so overwhelmed with what we were doing. <laughs> we stopped filming and we decided we would just update you because that seemed a lot easier and we wouldn't be giving you misinformation that obviously wasn't working. So, all the pre wiring's done, we haven't connected anything yet. Everything that we ended up using, I'll link below and let's go through what we've done so far. Okay, so to start out, this is what the box looks like. This is the top for it. So it's 13 inches tall to here, then it's another 13 inches tall up here. Basically, this is about 49 and a half inches long, and the 8020 is 15 millimeter. So the only thing we did do is we made these brackets ourselves. We bought a big piece of aluminum and cut this down and drilled all the holes in it. The batteries we went with are Renergy batteries. They're 170 amp hours each, so it's about 340 amp hours. Um, we chose lithium batteries because you can almost fully deplete them. They say about up to 80% you get out of them um, and they're going to last a lot longer cycles. And the reason why we went with so much battery power is we want to do induction cooktop. So we want no propane inside. So we just did these L brackets to hold them in place here. These are just straps you can pick up at a hardware store. The only thing we have noticed is we're not sure if it's coming from the wall, the batteries themselves, but they are a little squeaky when you have them together. You can kind of hear it a little bit there, but I'm not sure if other people have the same problem where it's really squeaky. Our next piece over here, which is the 3000 watt inverter. Again, the reason why we went the big inverter is because of the induction cooktop and we want to be able to run a blender too. And it's a charger. And it's a charger as well too, so. Really quick, I just wanted to add, I can link our electrical wiring diagram below because that I think was the most helpful thing that we found from some people's pages. It's just a PDF. You can even click on the, the items on it and order from our Amazon list there. Okay, back to the tour. Going down to the bottom down here, um, this is the MPPT um, DC to DC charger. This will charge from your alternator and this will also charge from your solar panels. This will be our AC panel and it'll just pop in back there okay so down here is where our bus bars will go we had four uh four channel bus bar four decided, stud four studs four stud bus bar and now we decided to go with the six stud bus bar we were kind of confused because we didn't know if we could connect multiple devices to one stud but we did just learn this morning you can so we're thinking about just sticking with the four stud to save on space yeah because we are a little bit tight we didn't expect it all to be so big yeah then below where the bus bars are going to be is our shunt. So this whole system is by Cymarine. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, or is it? Let us know if it's Cymarine or Cymarine. Yeah. Um, he would, for the longest time, JR was calling it Submarine. Yes. <laughs> we we'll might make a full video on that. So that'll go straight to the our control center. Yeah, basically that that's for the control center, and that shunt right there is to monitor how much battery power is coming in and how much battery power is coming out. And the temperature, right? The temperature as well, too. Yeah, we can monitor off that one. And then we'll have two other shunts, one to measure all of our DC appliances, and then another shunt to measure the water tank and the gray water tank. Mm -hmm. The other thing that was really helpful was, I think it's Far Out Rides calculator online for what kind of ought you need. But basically you type in your appliance, your current draw, and then your length of wire. So we just sat in the van and we decided where we were going to wire things. And then we measured how long that was and I put it into the calculator and it popped out what kind of wire we need. You can go bigger wire and then that will help in the long run make sure you don't have any issues yeah, i guess yeah, is the word. it's always better to go well you can bigger go bigger wire. wire but you can't go smaller i don't know if i'd recommend it all the time because it was really big wire but we also wanted to save money and not buy a bunch of different kind of spools and um, it ended up working out we, yeah we used all of our spools we only had to buy one more we went with marine grade wiring we probably got sold on it but what we liked about it is in the van there's all these little turns that you have to make with it i'll turn it around i think you can see like all those turns right there it's brushing up against the metal 
and if it breaks the wire or the insulation on the wire it will cause a huge issue so we wanted to go with this anchor marine grade wiring because it's insulated really well it has the two wires inside of it then it's also coated with something else too on top of it we're still gonna cover up a lot of that sections to protect like, it even better with rubber so back to the wire <laughs> Let's follow the wires. <laughs> so you'll see we went through and get a label maker if you don't have one. Oh my gosh. Highly recommend. If we did not have this label maker, finding from what this wire goes to would be treacherous. The 12 volt panels are right here, or the fuse boxes. And all of this is what's going to go to there. <laughs> I would say majority of our wiring is 12 volt wiring. Um, probably a little bit more robust than we need, especially for the lights. Right here you have this channel feeding up through here through the wall right here all this wiring right here is where our control panel is going to be and then through here so basically this is our main channel and this will stick up here behind our roof paneling and then along this side we tucked everything in the walls over here again labeling everything on this end as well so you know exactly where where it starts and where the wires end we left extra wire too just in case we don't want to run this wire twice these are the lights right here this is where it starts we wired everything in series. Is that series or parallel? The batteries will be in parallel. These will be in series. Back to, well, actually, I think that's done. I think now they're caught up. The only thing we still need to finish for as far as pre-wiring is all of our up top pre-wiring and then for underneath the van too. So we're gonna do our short power is gonna be plugged in underneath. We don't wanna have any plugs seen from the outside. Also, we wanna have an AC port outside as well too. So we can plug in anything from the outside of the van. So today we're gonna go get the Eight aught, I'm sorry, not eight aught. We're gonna use two, two aught, aught wire. Two aught wire and start building and connecting all of the panels together and hopefully um, it'll all work. <laughs> yeah. He just learned that we're like, we knew there like was regular dumb. gauge, but it oh, goes downwards to, uh, to get to downwards. a bigger well, wire. 14. We eventually figured out the correct wire size that we needed. Our next step is crimping and connecting the wires. First, we labeled the wires so that we knew where that length of wire was supposed to go in our system, and then we labeled the size of terminal ring that was going to be corresponding to that connection. Then we stripped the wire with a straight edge to take the insulation off and taped on the correct terminal size according to the label that we just created. Now we crimp, which takes strength, and we couldn't recommend this hydraulic crimper enough. We usually did two crimps on each side just to be safe. Now's my favorite part, the heat shrink. I had never heard of this before, but something about watching the fabric shrink onto the connection was just so soothing to me. But JR thinks I'm crazy. There's the connection, and now we just have to screw all of the bolts in, and it's good to go. But don't forget to turn off your whole system before working with or connecting any of your wires. up our first appliance. For connecting all of our appliances, we did the same process just on a smaller scale. Strip the wires, crimp the connections, and then heat shrink. In most of our builds, we use spade quick disconnects, which allowed us to just snap the two positive wires together and the two negative wires together, and then we were done. We're tightening the final pieces. We've been working on this for eight weeks, and I'm very nervous. It's off, right? Yes. Oh my god, I don't want to be stuck in here. What if something bad happens? Is this the good spot? Is it on? Yeah. Hot. Something beeped. The inverter. That makes sense. Oh my gosh. Try the fan. No. <gasps> I am so happy. Is it going? Uh, that is, is satisfying, it going? yeah. I can feel air. I am so happy. That was worth it. That little creation did it. 